The Gracie Curette series of periodontal instruments were designed by Dr. Clayton Gracie. Each instrument in the Gracie Curette series is area-specific, designed for use on certain teeth and certain tooth surfaces. The design characteristics of the Gracie 1718 improve adaptation to and instrumentation of the distal surfaces of posterior teeth. When compared to the Gracie 1314, the Gracie 1718 has accentuated angles, a longer terminal shank, and a blade that is one millimeter shorter. These characteristics enhance handle positioning and reach the most posterior distal surfaces of the teeth, access pockets, and allow the whole blade to be adapted to the tooth surface. Prior to the initiation of treatment, ensure that all instruments you will need for the procedure are in place. The instrument cassette should be placed on the bracket tray, and the advanced instrument cassette should be conveniently at hand if you are planning to use an advanced instrument such as the Gracie 1718. Steps for using the Gracie 1718 are as follows. Hold the curette using a modified pen grasp by using the dominant hand and holding the instrument handle with the index finger and thumb placed opposite each other. The middle finger should rest lightly on the shank and the ring finger should be placed on an oral structure, usually a tooth, for support with the pinky finger relaxed nearby. Visually identify the correct working end by holding the instrument so that you are looking at the toe of the working end and so that the lower shank is perpendicular to the floor. While looking at the cutting edges, visually identify the cutting edge that is lower or closer to the floor to be the correct working end. Be sure that you are seated in the correct position. To determine the correct clock position for treatment of the posterior teeth, you must be able to determine the aspects of the teeth that are facing towards or away from you. To do this, you must be seated at the 9 o'clock position. Therefore, the right facial aspects and the left lingual aspects will be facing towards you, while the right lingual aspects and the left facial aspects will be facing away from you. All posterior aspects facing towards you should be treated while you assume the 9 o'clock position, and all posterior aspects facing away from you should be treated while you assume the 10 to 11 o'clock position. For the left-handed clinician, the same concept is used where the 3 o'clock position is assumed for the posterior aspects facing towards the clinician, and the 1 to 2 o'clock position is assumed for posterior aspects facing away from the clinician. Establish an interaural fulcrum close to the working area and on the same arch while holding the instrument using a modified pen grasp. The ring finger should be kept straight with the tip of the finger placed close to the working area and on the same arch, supporting the weight of the hand. If parallelism of the working end to the long axis of the tooth cannot be established, use an advanced or extraoral fulcrum by holding the instrument using a modified pen grasp while using any variation where the ring finger may be resting intraorally or extraorally, thus providing stability for instrumentation. Some of the advanced or extra oral fulcruming techniques that may be used are cross arch intraoral, where the ring finger is placed on a tooth on the opposite side of the arch being treated, opposite arch intraoral, where the ring finger is placed on the opposite arch from the treatment area, finger on finger, where the ring finger of the dominant hand is placed on the finger of the non dominant hand. Palm facing out, extra oral, where the front surfaces of the middle, ring, and pinky fingers are resting extra orally on the mandibular arch. Fingers should also remain straight and together while resting on the mandible. Chin cup extra oral, where the clinician uses his or her palm to cup the chin and mandible during instrumentation. Position the terminal shank parallel to the long axis of the tooth at the distal line angle with the toe of the Gracie 1718 directed towards the back of the mouth. This is done by holding the instrument close to the tooth with the toe facing distally in the direction of instrumentation. Parallelism of the terminal shank in relation to the long axis of the tooth is established correctly when the functional shank appears to go up and over the tooth. Incorrect positioning will not result in parallelism of the terminal shank in relation to the long axis of the tooth, and the functional shank will appear down and around the tooth. 
Insert the blade beneath the gingival margin at zero degrees by lowering the handle slightly and holding the face of the cura against the tooth surface while gently inserting the blade beneath the gingival margin. Establish a correct working angulation of 70 to 80 degrees by adapting the handle so that the lower shank of the Gracie 1718 is parallel to the long axis of the tooth with the lower third of the blade adapted against the tooth surface. Activate the working stroke using a wrist or forearm motion while avoiding flexing of the fingers. This is done by applying the weight of the hand into the fulcrum while rocking the wrist and forearm as one unit. Movement of the fingers alone during instrumentation weakens the working stroke and adds stress to the fingers. Apply lateral pressure by pressing the working end against the tooth surface or calculus deposit while applying an equal amount of pressure with the index finger and thumb in and against the instrument handle. Light lateral pressure is used for the initial assessment stroke to detect any calculus deposits. Firm lateral pressure concentrated on the lower third of the blade is applied prior to and during instrumentation by applying more pressure against the instrument handle and on the fulcrum finger against the tooth. For the calculus removal stroke, medium lateral pressure is applied with a series of short continual strokes. To avoid excessive removal of cementum from the root surface during the root debridement stroke, use a lighter amount of lateral pressure with longer strokes that cover the root surface. Maintain instrument adaptation during working strokes by rolling the instrument handle slightly between the index finger and thumb so that the lower third of the blade remains adapted to the tooth surface as you work around the distal line angle and into the distal interproximal surface. Maintain optimal visibility and accessibility of the working area throughout the procedure by manipulating the use of the dental light, mouth mirror, and patient or operator positioning as needed. Avoid trauma to the tissues throughout the procedure by using a fulcrum at all times and using the instrument correctly so that the blade is always facing the tooth surface.